Ye Shen, A Cinderella Story from China, retold by Eileen Louie. During the time of the Qin and Han dynasties, a cave chief named Wu married two wives and each gave birth to baby girls. Before long, Chief Wu and one wife died, leaving one baby, Ye Shen, to be reared by her stepmother. The stepmother didn't like Ye Shen, for she was more beautiful and kinder than her own daughter, so she treated her poorly. Ye Shen was given the worst jobs, and the only friend she had was a beautiful fish with big golden eyes. Each day, the fish came out of the water onto the bank to be fed by Ye Shen. Now Ye Shen had little food for herself, but she was willing to share with the fish. Her stepmother, hearing about the fish, disguised herself as Ye Shen and enticed the fish from the water. She killed it and cooked the fish for dinner. Ye Shen was distraught when she learned of the fish's death. As she sat crying, she heard a voice and looked up to see a wise old man wearing the coarsest of clothes and with hair hanging down over his shoulders. He told her that the bones of the fish were filled with a powerful spirit and that when she was in serious need, she was to kneel before the bones and tell them of her heart's desires. She was warned not to waste their gifts. Yishin retrieved the bones from the trash heap and hid them in a safe place. Time passed and the spring festival was nearing. This was a time when the young people gathered in the village to meet one another and to find husbands and wives. Ye Shen longed to go to the festival, but her stepmother wouldn't allow it because she feared that someone would pick Ye Shen rather than her own daughter. The stepmother and the daughter left for the festival, where, leaving Ye Shen behind. Ye Shen, wanting desperately to go, asked the bones for clothes to wear to the festival. Suddenly, she was wearing a beautiful gown of azor blue, with a cloak of kingfisher feathers draped around her shoulders. On her feet were beautiful slippers. They were woven of golden threads in a pattern of a scaled fish, and the soles were made of solid gold. When she walked, she felt lighter than air. She was warned not to lose the slippers. Yi Shin arrived at the festival, and soon all were looking her way. The daughter and the stepmother moved closer, for they seemed to recognize this beautiful person. Seeing that she would be found out, Yi Shin dashed out of the village, leaving behind one of the golden slippers. When she arrived home, she was dressed again in her rags. She spoke again to the bones, but they were now silent. Saddened, she put the one gold slipper in her bed straw. After time, a merchant found the last slipper, and seeing the value in the golden slipper, sold it to the merchant who gave it to the king of the island kingdom of Tohan. Now the king wanted to find the owner of this tiny, beautiful slipper. He sent his people to search the kingdom, but no one's foot would fit into this tiny, golden slipper. He had the slipper placed on the display in a pavilion on the side of the road where the slipper had been found, with the announcement that the shoe was to be returned to the owner. The king's men waited at the site. All the women came to try on the shoe. One dark night, Yin Shin slipped quietly across the pavilion, took the tiny golden slipper, and turned to leave. But the king's men rushed out and arrested her. She was taken to the king, who was furious because he couldn't believe that anyone in rags could possibly own a golden slipper. As he looked closer at her face, he was struck by her beauty, and he noticed that she had the tiniest feet. The king and his men returned home with her, where she produced the other slipper, as she slipped on the two slippers, her rags turned into a beautiful gown and a cloak she had worn to the festival. The king